Hi, my name is Sean Poppy, and I'm a biologist at the University of Georgia Savannah River Ecology Laboratory. I'm standing on the bank of Upper Three Runs Creek, located on the Savannah River site in Aiken, South Carolina. And what is unique about this area is it's what we call a river otter latrine. River otters come up out of the creek and they come up into this area and go to the bathroom. I could tell this was an otter latrine because of all the little piles of river otter poop, also called scat by scientists. The scat contains fish scales and pieces of crayfish shells. To learn more about the activity that occurs here, I mounted two wildlife cameras to this tree to record the animals that visited the area. One camera is aimed toward the creek and the other is aimed toward a small stream that flows into the creek. River otters tend to choose a latrine area where two waterways intersect. Let's take a look at some of the footage that the cameras captured. River otters spend most of their time alone and tend to use latrines to communicate with other otters. Going to the bathroom on this route allows for the wind to help carry its scent. Rubbing on the ground is another way to leave scent. Some otters will gather debris to make a pile and then leave their scat on it. This river otter caught a fish in the creek and feels comfortable eating it in the small stream on the edge of the latrine. River otters do look for social interaction. They play together with members who are accepted into the group and take every opportunity to mark the area. Scratching trees is another way to mark the territory. One last thing to observe about river otters is that they often look like they are dancing while going to the bathroom. During this study, there were many other animals that visited the area. Let's view footage of some other mammals. A few rodents live in the area and are quite interesting to observe. They play together just like the river otters and appear to look for each other. This larger rodent visited the area foraging for food. A major rain event caused some minor flooding. The eastern gray squirrel, another rodent, is known for hoarding food for the future. Gray squirrels bury excess nuts they find in hopes of finding them later. This helps with seed dispersal and reforestation, the planting of trees. Beavers are the largest rodent in North America. These images were captured as the beavers were heading back into the creek, allowing for observation of their large, flat, paddle-shaped tails. The marsh rabbit is a small cottontail rabbit but does not have the white coloring on the underside of its tail. They feed on aquatic plants, including the switch cane seen here. 
Marsh rabbits walk on all fours in addition to being able to hop like other rabbits. The nine-banded armadillo eats a lot of bugs. When scared, they can jump straight up a few feet. They have a hard armor for protection, but cannot roll up into a ball. The opossum is the only marsupial in North America. They have 50 teeth, opposable thumbs on all four feet, and a prehensile tail. However, they do not hang from their tails and sleep. Opossums are known to play dead when threatened. Although raccoons are mainly nocturnal, they sometimes move around during the day. They have great sensitivity in their front paws and often look like they are washing them in the water when they are searching for food such as crayfish, fish, and amphibians. The mask-like dark fur around their eyes is thought to reduce glare, making it easier for them to see at night. These animals appear to have a nightly routine and stick to it regardless of the changing water levels in this area. Bobcats can swim, but typically avoid water. This bobcat most likely crossed the small stream by jumping over it since they can jump over a span of almost 10 feet. Bobcats get their name because of their stubby tails that look like they've been cut off or bobbed. They generally prey on rabbits, rodents, birds, insects, other small game, and occasionally deer. Coyotes are native to North America and were able to migrate into the southeast thanks to humans who eliminated their natural predators. They are very adaptable to human altered environments. This coyote appears to like the scents left by the river otters. Coyotes are opportunistic feeders and eat just about anything. They have no problem swimming across the creek. Occasionally, coyotes that are almost black in color are observed in the area. The next animal is one that I've personally observed at the latrine when I quietly walked into the area to check on the cameras. I could hear snorting, grunting, and rustling of the vegetation. I managed to capture some video with my cell phone camera as I mentally prepared to climb up a nearby tree. These animals are more afraid of us and flee, but they will defend their piglets if necessary. Wild hogs can be a danger to the environment due to their search for food. They use their snouts to root for food underground which can damage plants and cause harm or eliminate small animals like amphibians in the same habitat. They have no problem swimming across the creek. Wild hogs can reproduce quickly with one sow, or female pig, being able to give birth to multiple litters of piglets per year. White-tailed deer are the smallest of the North American deer. 
They have no problem crossing the creek, but this one cannot get proper footing to get back on land. Shortly after the doe or female deer leaves the area, a buck or male deer shows up. It seems like the latrine area is also a meeting place for the deer. This buck has found a tasty mushroom. Although it does not make him sick, it could be poisonous for us. Other than mushrooms, white-tailed deer can eat a wide variety of plants. Some humans visited the river otter latrine. They are fellow scientists that heard about the study and asked if it was okay to visit and make observations of their own. The last mammals are dogs. Although dogs make great pets, they should be contained on their owner's property. This roaming pack of dogs could cause harm to wildlife or people, or be harmed by wildlife or people in vehicles. The dog's owners are being irresponsible and breaking the law by letting them wander around. The next animal we are going to see is the largest predator in the area. As I walked down the trail to check the cameras one day, I noticed this guy. It is an adult male alligator about 10 feet long and was not happy to see me. He has a powerful tail to help him swim and will use it to defend himself. He hissed loudly to scare me off and I left him alone. On another occasion, I heard a lot of splashing while walking toward the cameras. When I got close enough, I could see a large alligator in the stream with something in its powerful jaws. A major rain event caused some flooding which allowed the alligator to be able to hide underwater in the overflowed stream. He must have known that this area had a lot of animal activity where he could catch an easy meal. He did not like me approaching and took off down the creek. These still images were captured as an alligator moved through the area. When walking on land, alligators must lift their bodies up off the ground, which takes a good deal of energy. They often need to take breaks and rest when crossing land. Next, we are going to look at some of the birds that visited. This turkey vulture has a great sense of smell and may have thought the otter scat was a dead animal it could eat. A common grackle visited the river otter latrine followed by a thrush, possibly a Swainson's thrush. This blue jay is getting a drink from the stream. A northern cardinal is looking for food. This is another thrush, but we cannot see enough detail to tell which one. 
Here we have a few American robins enjoying the shallow water of the small stream. This northern flicker eats mainly ants and beetles. Wood ducks are common in the creek and stream. A major rain event provided more water area for them to explore. Even the latrine got cleaned and the wood ducks were able to swim over it. This great blue heron enjoyed the deeper water. A red-winged blackbird stopped by for a few minutes. Brown thrashers often feed on the ground and can be heard rustling the leaves in search of food. Another ground forager is the northern mockingbird. This gray catbird tries to catch an eastern tiger swallowtail as it flutters by. The Louisiana water thrush, a type of warbler, prefers forested creeks and streams and is known for bobbing its rear end. A red-shouldered hawk landed to investigate a possible meal. This pileated woodpecker was quickly scared off by a smaller bird that had a nest nearby. I hope you enjoyed viewing some of the video that was captured of the animals moving through this area. We are very fortunate to live in a region that has great biodiversity, lots of different living things. These animals are afraid of us and do their best to stay hidden from us. Wildlife cameras give us an opportunity to be able to observe them without scaring them away. Even though you were able to view this video in a relatively short amount of time, it took many hours to create, and that was after analyzing over 12 and a half hours of wildlife camera footage. The same can be said about books. Authors spend a lot of time doing their research, finding their results, and putting it into words. So if you want to learn more about any of the animals you've seen or really anything else that you have an interest in, the best thing you can do is visit your local library and find a book about it. Books are an easy way to get information and they don't require electricity so you can take them just about anywhere.